Hi, welcome to Speed Track Consulting introduction and review of the TR3030R, one of the signature turbochargers in our series. As usual, we'll go through our six points and we'll go over each of them as well. That is the engine size application, power level characteristics, purpose, composition, and specifications. Engine size application really are for those uh, that have either four cylinder in the 1.6 to 2.5 liter category that has great full cylinder head design uh, as well as the possibility for a camshaft. Uh, for those in the six liter category, it's really narrowed down from anywhere from 2.5 to 3 liters uh, because of the characteristics are going to be a bit more specific for that size engine as opposed to upper end power, they're looking more for lower end torque, better mid range. For the 8-cylinder category, this is for 4 liters and higher, of course, but we don't have see many people use these uh, as a twin category outside of the 6-cylinder category. Uh, really, those in the Porsche category in the 6-cylinder is where uh, we would see the utilization of this most. Let's look at power level. Uh, actually, the power level on this is right there in between the GTX 3071R, GTX uh, 3076R and slightly below the uh, uh, Borg Warner EFR 7670 class. So we're looking at about 500 to 570 wheel horsepower as a single unit. As a twin set, uh, which very few uh, applications would really be used for this turbocharger unless they're uh, in the Porsche 996 category uh, that really uses two sets of banks, still wants that lower end torque and response, but still upper end power. Uh, we've seen as much as about a thousand horsepower with a set of twins of these. Characteristics on this really is the most awesome time attack turbo for for just under 550 wheel horsepower and you're under 2.2 liters. Uh, yes, I did say earlier that 2.5 liters would be able to benefit from this, especially if they're uh, working uh, on high performance driving events or time attack. But we found that for those that in the 2.2 liter and below, it gives them a better chance of being able to act as though that they're a larger motor because of the fact that it has better transient response, lower end torque, and still at the same time still make about 550 to 570 wheel horsepower, um, especially uh, within its boost threshold you know, characteristics. What we did basically was take the standard GT3076R, which is a fantastic platform to be able to work with from the beginning, with better transient response than the GTX 3076R. At the same time, we wanted to have it a better power range that's available than the GTX 3071R. So, as I said in another video with the GTX 3076R, there was the idea of compressor wheel, turbine wheel, proper matching when it comes to utilization of a turbocharger within its boost threshold. This is an example, we feel, of a better match of the compressor wheel to the turbine wheel than the GTX 3076R. The one thing about the GTX uh, 3071R that we liked was the fact that it gave a lot more mid-range torque, a lot more lower end transient response at 56 pounds a minute, but the caveat to it was it wasn't able to make over 530 wheel horsepower. So we wanted to be able to have a slightly larger compressor wheel, better weight uh, than uh, say the our previous generation TR3030R, and at the same time give much more attention to better torque response, better transient response, and a little bit less on top end power than what the GTX uh, 3076R tries to do. In the other video, I stated that the GTX 3076R, very well that it may be made, uh, has some issues with that 60 millimeter exhaust wheel. And the better match for that was uh, the GTX 3576R. I know that's a lot of letters and numbers to kind of remember, but if you can see below, I have these kind of written around here to just kind of give you a better idea of what we're looking at in terms of comparisons between several different turbochargers. This would work well in terms of comparison with uh, the slightly uh, lower EFR series, just under the 7670 size. So that's where the characteristics come into play here. Let's look at purpose. Really, it, as I said earlier, it's the ultimate time attack car uh, turbo uh, for anyone under 2.2 liters, especially for those guys. Um, we wanted to be able to make a GTX 3071R and give it a bit more punch to it and at the same time still keep that transient uh, and response and lower end torque with it. Let's look at the composition. This is a Garrett uh, Speedtrack Consulting Hybrid based on the GT3076R base turbocharger. That means that the cartridge as well as the turbine housing uh, and all the interior internals are Garrett. Uh, the only thing that we've really changed with it are 
uh, the compressor wheel here and this little piece here which I'll describe here in just a second. This is sold as either a full unit or it can be sold as a cartridge and cover. And the reason why we wanted to be able to do that was because there are those that have either a GTX 3076R, GTX 3071R, or even the cast wheel versions of those in the GTR series. And want to be able to still utilize their downpipes, uh, their other exhaust components, uh, and still be able to bolt in uh, this particular turbocharger without uh, any kind of modifications to it. So we felt it was best to be able to stay with this and not vary from the box a bit. Uh, so just like with the GTX series, uh, it's sold as a cartridge and cover so that it can be able to replace uh, the cartridge that one currently has, but still keep the turbine housing that they have so they don't have to do a lot of modification with it. But for those that want to kind of start off with this, especially if they plan on using aggressive street spirited driving, uh, high performance driving events, or time attack, uh, this is sold standard as a full unit. This is a dual ball bearing cartridge that's from Garrett. So what's going to happen here is uh, the water lines, like I showed here, are a requirement as well as the use of all the GTR hardware. So those that use uh, hardware from uh, the GT28 series all the way to the 35R series uses the same return flanges and feed fittings as they did with those particular turbos. So we didn't vary from the box a whole lot. The one thing that uh, especially that we find most proud of though is the use of this. And that is the internal velocity stack um, that comes uh, as a standard for the TR3030R. We found that those that are using these in a time attack or high performance driving event uh, usually tend to have velocity stacks right towards the front of their filter, but it may cause some interference, especially trying to adjust the filter to be able to fit with it. What we found is that with this velocity stack, we've added about 10 to 12 wheel horsepower on the top end, meaning that these are uh, approaching over 20 pounds of boost and higher, uh, because it would actually eliminate a lot of that turbulence of that entryway going into the compressor cover. So yes, the ported shroud is still here. Uh, it hasn't been replaced, but this has been made to take up a lot of that room. The cool part about this is that this is still a 4-inch inlet, so it's not going to be able to interfere with the uh, filter that one would have if they had a GT30R anyway. So you can still put your standard 4-inch uh, outer diameter filter on this uh, or create intake piping to be able to work with that and not have to worry about this particular stack interfering with anything. Uh, we found that that turbulence is able to go down with a lot of the high rotational speeds uh, that this turbo is projected to perform but at the same time be able to help with that, that upper end power because uh, sometimes ported shrouds uh, tend to, even though they sound great and they look fantastic, uh, tend to kind of take a couple of horsepower up on the upper end. So this would help eliminate that but still uh, keep a top end at its peak when necessary. The great part, the only caveat that we found about this though, uh, that anyone's ever complained of at all, is the fact that uh, the GT3076R cover has always been known to be uh, a very aggressive high pitched sound uh, due to its uh, inducer bleed groove that's quoted here, as well as the um, ported shroud that's set here. So it makes the turbocharger just a little bit quieter by a few decibels. Uh, it's not much of a big deal. Some people just love that super high pitch sound. Uh, others don't, but it does quiet it down a little bit just to let you know. But that's only because of the fact that it's concentrating on having less turbulence with the inlet air. Well, let's look at the specifications of this thing, and then we'll get out of here. And that is that this turbo is 59 pounds a minute using our T6 7075 uh, billet wheel aluminum. This is using a standard Garrett uh, compressor cover, bolts, cartridge. So this is going to be a uh, .60 AR, uh, about the size of a TO4E, 4-inch inlet, 2-inch outlet. As we were saying earlier, the cartridge still is going to require, I'll go ahead and zoom that in here real quick, it's still going to require 14 millimeter water fittings. This is a requirement, not an option like with the journal bearings. And it's going to more than likely need a 30 thousandths restrictor for this. Okay, So in this particular example, I have here a 7 16 which is the standard thread pitch size for this Garrett cartridge, using a 30 thousandths restrictor up here and a dash 3. Dash 3 and dash 4 are typically the standard sizes available for that. Uh, as you can tell, of course, I've always uh, high heat coated the turbine housing as well as the brackets. But in this particular case, if it's sold as a full unit, it's going to come with a uh, 2.5 inch T31 4 bolt uh, style. 
Okay, uh, so you have your T3 here. This is going to be a 2.5 inch four bolt style here, and you can either use uh, the uh, T uh, T31 adapter flange to turn to convert this into a V-band. But the great part about this is because of the fact that it's a full ball bearing unit. Uh, you could be able to work with anything that's coming from the GTR series in terms of a V-band. So that means the new Garrett uh, nickel resistant uh, turbine housings, the tile investment cast stainless steel housings, any housings that are able to be used on a GT30R or GTX series 30R class uh, turbocharger, you can still be able to use with this. This is why we're able to uh, utilize this in both sets of housings. This uses the 70 millimeter N32 exhaust wheel just like with the standard GTX 3071R and GTX 3076R as well so anything that was in that class uh, that's using that same 60 millimeter wheel we find that this is with this 60 millimeter wheel is fantastic but the GTX 3076R kinds of overwhelm it so we decided to make something 59 pounds a minute as opposed to the 60 to 62 pounds a minute that the uh, GTX wheel uh, usually puts out Again, that's it for it. I really like this turbocharger because it's a great time attack turbo for those that want to stand under 500 horsepower. And it gives guys in the 1.6, 1.8, 2 liter, and 2.2 liter guys a chance to be able to act as though they're a larger displacement engine without all the drawbacks of having a turbocharger that's too big. Thanks again for watching, and as always, safe boosting, and uh, have a good day. Thanks.